Hey guys, Jason Timothy here, musicsoftwaretraining.com. And uh, today I am working on a multi-sample instrument using Sampler. And I thought that I would share some tips for you in setting this up. Because the idea here is how do you first sample all your notes across the keyboard, or at least the notes that you want in the zone that you want, and how do you take that from short samples and create seamless loops so that when you hit the note, it plays for as long as you hold the, the key down? Uh, so let me kind of give you a walkthrough of what I'm doing here. And uh, I'll break it down for you and then um, I'll catch you up with, with where I'm at here. So the first thing that you would normally do, let's go ahead and drop in a sampler instrument, just a, a blank one here, and we'll use this as an example. All right, so we just have a blank sampler here, and let's assume that we have a long sample here. I, I'm wondering, is this the one? Yeah, so this here is a sample from a keyboard, from an instrument. So each note is sampled, so if you listen, And you may want to use headphones for this because the, uh, the notes are pretty low. I'll come up here. So as you can see, each note has been sampled one at a time and each note has been held down for a few seconds you know, to get that. So now we've got one audio clip here that we would want to bring into our sampler. All right, so now we've got all these separate notes here, but we need to take this a step further because we want to be able to play each separate note on different keys, right? So what we're gonna do is we come into our zone area here, all right? And this is just the whole sample. So what we would do is one at a time, we would set our start point here. So we want to get right in there, right on that zero point. All right. And then when I hit a note, let me just solo this. As you can hear, it plays right when I hit the note. Great. So what I need to do now is I need to duplicate this and then the next one is the next note. So we come in here and we do this and then duplicate that. This just makes it easier to know which is the next note that you need to go to. Like so, then duplicate this, go to the next one. And so forth. So now we've got four separate notes, but if I play them, they're all gonna play at the same time. And that's not what we want. So what I know is that I started on a C note and then progressively went up one note at a time or one semitone at a time. So we want to set our root note. As you can see, each note is playing all the way across the keyboard. So no matter what note I play, these notes are playing across the keyboard. And we don't want that. We, we just want each note or each sample here to represent one note, okay? So we know that our root on this first note is a C, and it's kind of a lower C. So let's go ahead and put this on C1. So I'm just gonna hold down Alt, and we've got this on C1, all right? And the next one is gonna be the next note up, which is C sharp one. 
and the next one is going to be D1, and the next one is going to be D sharp one. So we've got these these four notes, all right? So now each one of these are going to play the correct note. So that's the correct note there. If I come here and play the next note up, it's going to play this one. I'll solo this note, next note, right? So what we want to do is now isolate just the single note for each sample. All right, perfect. So now we can we don't have to solo these because now when I play the C1 note on my keyboard, it's only going to play this one note. And then the next note and so forth, right? So we've got these four notes. The problem is we don't want to play the next note and the next note when we hold down the key. We kind of want each note to be its own thing. And since these are short samples, we need to loop this in a way that allows it to sound like one long note. So what we need to do is come in and go from this single play mode to this is the looping mode. And as you can see, the loop shows up here. I got to come all the way to the end and drag this back. Now we can create a loop. Problem is, when I just kind of randomly create this loop, uh, it's not going to sound correct. As you can hear, we have a click every single time it goes around. So we don't want that. So what we need to do is set this to a zero crossing point. So we need to get in really, really close here and find the closest, see, like right here, that's not a zero line. This right around here is right about the zero point. And these little dots will kind of show us the sample locations. So we have this kind of going up here, right? So we need that same pattern at the end of our loop. And we're pretty close here. So I'm going to come out. But let's just say we're, we're close, but not quite on. If you listen in headphones, you, you hear like a slight little click. And that's what we're trying to get rid of. So the closer we get to the zero point, the more transparent it becomes until you can't even hear a click. And I think that is the area right there. Let's see, did I, okay. And now that sounds like a consistent long note that I can hold for as long as I want to. All right. So, what we have to do here is then do this looping with every note that we sampled. And then once we have that, we can save this. Obviously, this is just four notes as an example. But over here, we've got, I think, maybe 24 different samples, maybe even more. right? And as you can see, it's all put on one note at a time. The only difference is here, I, um, I drag this back so if you play a note lower than this beginning root note, you'll, you'll still be able to get the correct tone. But the best tone is going to be right on that root note. So this just gives me a little more range. And I don't have to do that. I can just bring this all the way back here and it just starts here. But I like to do this just to give a little bit more flexibility. And then the same here, 
I just add some notes. But once again, the further away you get from the root note, the less convincing the sample sounds. So once that's set up and we've got all of our loops, we just uh, go ahead and save our sampler as a preset and we've got ourselves a multi-sampled instrument. So if that is something that you've been trying to figure out how to do, that's how you do it. So I hope this quick video helps and I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. Take care.